and welcome to a totally worth the wait edition of Ben's Junk. Well, it's only taken me a couple of episodes worth of delays, but I am finally ready to tackle the Innovative Technologies ITNS 500 slide slash negative slash photo slash business card scanner. And, uh, honestly, I haven't been too impressed with this one. Good night, everybody! Or I guess I ought to be a bit more articulate than that. So, the main reason I picked this out uh, on the most recent archive thrifting video, actually, was so I could start tackling slides and, better yet, educational film strips on the archive and uh, the latter being something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, and will have to continue to wait on. More on that in a bit. But anyway, let me grab the box here. The uh, slick box design, I know I'm not going to get anything even approaching the whole thing in the shot here, but uh, this uh, fairly slick box design led me to believe that this was going to be a fairly slick product. But as I found, it's actually very basic. There are no user adjustable settings on the unit itself. You just get what you get. And the software only lets you choose between two levels of resolution and between slides, photos, etc. And that's it. And you know it's the height of quality when the software installation goes wrong and you get a prompt to, and I quote, please connect manufacturer. But uh, as far as the unit itself goes, it's cheap and cheerful. First of all, it's not really a scanner. It's more a device that takes a borderline literal snapshot of your picture or slide or whatever. Uh, no actual scanning occurs. There doesn't seem to be a motor of any sort in here, or if there is, it's the world's quietest motor. But I don't think there is one. I mean, this is a very lightweight, cheap and cheesy sort of thing. And everything you stick in the machine, be it in the side or down on the bottom here, is on some sort of magnetic tray. So, for example, here's the slide tray. And I've already got a slide in there, but uh, you just, again, pop it open, magnetic, and you take your slide and you stick it in there, make sure it's seated right, close it, and you slide it into the side of the machine. And I should note that there are no notches or anything to help guide you, so you have to watch the software on screen and make sure it's lined up right. So it doesn't really assist you a whole lot. Now, uh, let's see here. If I want to do negatives, this was fun. So here's the tray for negatives. And it's arranged for pre-cut strips of three photos at a shot. Which, if you remember, back in the old days when you would get real honest-to-god film developed, it was usually four per film strip. So that kind of throws it a bit out of whack here. And so unless you want to cut down existing ones or and then have single, uh, you know, negatives, in which case, you know, why not have a slide? Yeah. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to start doing film strips occasionally on Archive, and, uh, well, that's kind of a no-go, because it would just get crimped. And I thought about cutting out the plastic and letting it just kind of spill out the sides, but aside from this little uh, door, I guess you could say, there's nothing else to hold anything down. There's nothing to hold anything down within the machine. So whatever funky angle it would be resting at would be what I would be stuck with. So unfortunately, it's back to the drawing board on that front. Now, 
the only real great variation in this whole process is, uh, well, here's the one for photos. And uh, this is an annoyance in and of itself. I believe this is for five by seven pictures and most of mine are four by six. So you just kind of have to plop them in there and hope for the best and whatever curling has occurred, you know, you just kind of have to live with it. Now, there is a little recess down in there for business cards. But if I want to do business cards, I could just stick it in a regular scanner and probably do better. But uh, this is the only real variation. So if I want to do business cards, I've got this uh, hunk of hard plastic, which I, I put back in the bag, and you just rest it on there and take care of it. Now, unfortunately, if you try this in tandem with a photo, it just, you get glare in return. But I haven't been able to use this anyway because there was a sticker on the plastic and, you know, oh, how terrible a sticker, you know, use some Goo Gone. Well, I tried Goo Gone and Acetone and... I still cannot get the sticker residue off. If anything, it just has spread. So it's actually kind of stuck in the baggie. I, I'm not sure if I could get it out even if I wanted to. But uh, having said that, I do have some uh, standard old photos to test with. We just will skip the business card part. Now, uh, finally getting down to business, for the remainder of today's video, I'm going to run a bit of footage taken on my old Windows Vista machine, which is the intended OS for this. Uh, I think this dates to 2008. And so you'll see the software in action and some of the subsequent post-production, if you will, that I had to do to make the pictures, especially the slides, at least somewhat accurate as to what they're like in person. Then after that, I'm going to go all boring Uncle Benny boy on you and torture you with a slideshow of some selections from some random Blackhawk films, then commercially available slides that I got. I think these all date to sometime in the first half of the 60s, if I had to guess. But for the cherry on top, I have managed to, as I've mentioned, dig out some honest to God pictures and negatives, vacation photos, which were taken by me and possibly my father as well on a trip to Florida back in, I think, 1998, possibly 99. And uh, no, none of us appear in any of the ones that I'm going to run. But otherwise, that is it for me on the vocal front for today. I'll see you again soon.